This is the game arena. Click on the asteroid view screen icon for a close-up view of your asteroid. This will take you to the surface of whichever asteroid is currently highlighted. Before you can build anything, you must allocate money to the construction fund. When you buy items from SciTech or from black market traders, the cost will be deducted from the money budget. Any money you receive during the game, from selling ores to the Federation or trading on the black market, will also be credited here. You can then allocate it to the construction fund for buildings, vehicles for constructing ships, the orbital dock and spy satellites, missiles for missiles, and personnel to pay your colony supervisors, security and agents. Allocating money is done by clicking and dragging right on the fund you want your money in. If you decide that you would rather build ships than missiles, clicking and dragging left will return it to the money budget so that you can allocate it to another fund. Having allocated sufficient funds, you can now start building up your colony. To clear any menu, you can either click on the return icon or you can right-click on your mouse. Click on the construction icon to open the construction menu. There are several pages in the construction menu dedicated to the various elements of colony life. This first page deals with housing and social control. Click on any building to select it. When you have decided what to build, click on that building and then clear the screen by clicking on Return or by right-clicking. The building will be constructed close to where the skyhook is. Click once to position your building. The scaffolding going up indicates how far the construction process has got and clicking once on the scaffolding will give you more information about that building. Once it is complete, double-clicking on many buildings will give you other useful information. If you wish to build more than one building, keep clicking and they will be positioned around the skyhook. Toggling to tactical mode allows more accurate positioning and will also show you the areas protected by screen generators and the effects of certain missiles. Should you decide to demolish a building, click on the destroy icon in the construction menu. This will automatically return you to the asteroid surface, with the mouse pointer now showing as crosshairs. Target and click on whichever building has outlived its usefulness to demolish it. Finally, if you have insufficient funds to complete any construction project, a message telling you this will appear in the message window, top center of the screen. A weapons factory and shipyards are required in order to build ships, as are supplies of the relevant ores and enough money in the vehicles fund. Click on the building to access the shipyards. Click on the build icon to access the construction menu. Small craft can be constructed in the shipyards. Scout ships, combat eagles and assault fighters. The scout ships are immediately necessary in order for you to locate and prospect other asteroids. All available ship types have a number of hard points, that is points to which weapons and or shielding can be attached. To attach a weapon or defensive shield to your craft, click on the item required and then click on the hard point. If you change your mind, click again on the hard point to remove the item and replace it with another. Any combination of ships can be built at one time. The number of any particular ship on order can also be decreased. Once you've decided what to construct, click on Return or right-click to return to the shipyard screen. The ships on order are displayed here with their time to construction, along with any messages telling you that you need more ores or more money in the vehicles fund, or that there is currently insufficient labour to complete this project. 
it is possible to cancel construction orders from here also. But it is only possible to cancel an order before construction of that particular ship has begun. It is worth checking the shipyards every now and again to see if construction is being held up for any reason. However, if you have hired a colony supervisor, they can be ordered to inform you of any problems. Only the smaller craft can be constructed in the shipyards. Larger fighters are built in the orbital space dock constructed through the command center. Only one orbital dock can be built per asteroid. This works in a similar way to the ship construction. The orbital dock requires money in the vehicles fund and high levels of certain ores, so it is wise to make sure that you have these available before commencing construction. And here is one we built earlier. Click on the orbital view icon to see the dock and also to see any larger craft you have built and the Federal Law Transporter when it arrives. Click on the dock to access the construction facilities there. TetraCorp have provided you with the blueprints for transporters and destructors. Any other blueprints must be purchased from SciTech. Construction of these craft works in the same way as the terrestrial shipyards. Completed ships will appear to the side of the orbital dock and will orbit the colony until given new orders or assigned to a fleet. A weapons factory, shipyards and a landing pad are required to prospect for new asteroids. Once you have built a scout ship, click on the ship inventory icon or on the landing pad itself. Red behind the ship signifies that it is still in the underground hangars. Click on the ship to select it so that orders can be given. You can either launch the scout from here or go straight to ship orders. The different ships have different sets of commands available to them. Press Control and pass the mouse over the icons to see what they are. To send a scout out to find new asteroids, click on the Search for Asteroids icon. This takes you to the scanner view to select where you would like your scout to search. When you click on a sector to select it, you will see the red ranging circle change diameter. This tells you whether or not that ship will be able to make it back to its home asteroid from wherever you have sent it. If the home asteroid is just out of range, there is a chance that the ship will be able to use its impulse limp engines and get back safely. Clicking on return or right clicking will complete the order. The orders you have just given that ship now appear in the dialog box. It is possible to give the ship up to three stacked orders, but unless you have fitted your craft with the long range transmitters available from SciTech, you will have to wait until they return before receiving the information. You have now sent a scout off to search for new asteroids. When you find one, you will want to know whether it is worth colonizing. The message window will let you know when this happens. Click on the information icon to see what it has found. Now you can send your scout to perform a geological survey on the asteroid to discover its ore levels. Click on the Prospect Asteroid icon. Once the geo survey is done, the results will appear on the report summary. This information will also be stored in the colony database so that you can keep a complete record of which asteroids you have surveyed. Once the report summary is full, the oldest reports will be automatically cleared, or you can clear them yourself by using the Cancel Cyber button. If you think the asteroid is worth mining, you must colonize it. 
the transporter, like all ships, can be accessed through the ship inventory menu or by clicking directly on the ship. Again, the transporter has its own selection of commands. Click on the Start Colony icon to initiate colonization of a new asteroid. Make sure there are sufficient funds on the money budget to allow construction of the CPU. And once you begin construction of your new colony, remember to build a refueling depot or your transporter may not be able to return to base or start any further colonies. In addition to using the ore you mine for constructing buildings, ships and missiles, you must also sell it to raise money for the same reasons. There are two markets for your ore. This tutorial deals with the legal market. The Federal Transporter will visit your colonies regularly. The message that informs you that a visit is imminent will also allow you to choose which colony you wish the Federal Transporter to come to. While the Federal Transporter is here, or can be transferred by clicking either on the transporter itself or on the relevant icon on the command center menu. Units of ore stored on this asteroid are shown here and moved by the slider bars to the transporter's hold here. Current ore prices are shown here. They are also shown on the command center menu. The command center shows you when the next transporter will arrive. The current prices paid for ores by the Federation and allows you to access the Federal Transporter from the colony surface. When the Federal Transporter is not at your asteroid, this icon will not function. You will be warned before the transporter leaves. When the transporter is at your colony, however, you can access the menu as often as you like and change the amounts you want to sell. Once it has left, the Federation will pay you for any ores you have sold them. The money goes directly into finance. Your profits will always go into the money fund to be used for buying items from SciTech and elsewhere, or for redistribution into the other budgets for construction and so on. There are other markets to sell your ores to, and where you can also buy and sell other items. If you wish to investigate the illegal markets, please select the other trading tutorial from the main menu. Having built your ships, you must form them into fleets in order to use them effectively against any enemies. Only ships currently at this colony can be added to the fleet. Click on the Fleet Control icon on the Control Panel. This is currently blank as you have no fleets. To form a fleet, click on the Add Ships to Fleet icon. To select ships for a fleet, click on any ships that you wish to add. Once the selected ships have been added to Fleet 1, the slowest ship selected gives the fleet speed. The fleet is also shown on the scanner views as a triangle of the same color as your asteroids. Press the control key and pass the mouse pointer over the various icons to show their purpose. The arrowhead icons toggle through the fleet slots. This icon allows you to name your fleet. First, backspace to delete the current name, then type in your own choice. Remember to press Return when you have finished to allocate the new name. The fleet's position is also shown here. These icons alter the percentage of the fleet that must be destroyed in combat before that fleet will retreat. If you set it at 100%, the fleet may never return. Setting it at 50% means that you will lose half your ships before they beat a strategic retreat. With this icon, however, you can force the fleet to retreat at any time. 
This instructs the fleet to proceed peacefully to an asteroid. You might use it to send your fleet to one of your own colonies or to pay a peaceful visit to one of your allies. This instructs the fleet to attack the asteroid it is sent to. Make sure that at least some of the ships in the fleet are equipped with ground attack hardpoints as well as ship-to-ship -ship weapons. The intercept fleet icon is dual purpose. If you select a hostile fleet, your fleet will attack that fleet. If you select another of your own fleets, however, the two fleets will merge. This sends the fleet to patrol selected sectors for a certain period of time. This can be useful for observing enemy activity. This cancels the previous order given, which will be listed above in the dialog box. This cancels any ship selection. This can be used to give orders to individual selected ships. This detaches any selected ship or ships from the fleet. If this is done at an asteroid, the detached ships will orbit until given further orders. If done while in space, the detached ships will form a new fleet. And this is the Add Ships to Fleet icon. Giving fleet orders is similar to individual ship orders. Any orders are shown here and up to three stacked commands can be given. Orders can be changed while the fleet is in space by clicking on the fleet symbol. If you don't cancel the previous orders, they will be done in the sequence in which you issued them. When the fleet is in combat with another fleet, the battle can be seen in close-up by double-clicking on the fleet symbol. The fleet's range is that of the smallest craft in that fleet. This can be extended by loading small craft into the command cruiser and transporting them that way. In order to construct missiles, a weapons factory and missile silos are required. Click on the silo to access the construction menu. Missiles require ores and funds in the missile budget. Clicking on each type of missile selects that missile and gives you the necessary data about it. Use the plus and minus icons to increase or decrease the number of missiles you wish to build. Other missile designs are also available from SciTech. If you do not have a colony supervisor overseeing this, it is worth checking the missile's progress occasionally. Once the missiles have been built, click on the missile control icon on the control panel to target and launch them. Select which missiles you wish to fire by clicking on them, then click on the target icon. The number of missiles and the selected target appear here. Having selected a target, remember to launch your missile strike In order to observe the damage your missiles are causing to your enemy's colony, send a spy satellite to your target asteroid before launching your strike. In addition to using the ore you mine for constructing buildings, ships and missiles, you must also sell it to raise money for the same reasons. There are two markets for your all. This tutorial deals with the non-federal markets. All trade other than selling ore to the Federation is dealt with through the trade icon on the control panel. You can also trade with alien cultures and with other traders including black market traders who are, for obvious reasons, less predictable than their federal counterparts. Trade with alien cultures is possible once their ambassador has made formal contact with you and may then be carried out at any time, assuming that diplomatic relations have not broken down for any reason. You will be alerted to the presence of other traders through messages in the prompt box and the information menu. 
If you don't want to trade at this time, click on the Cancel Cyber button. The trader may contact you again on this visit or leave it until the next time they are in your area. If you do want to trade, click on the Target Cyber button. Once the trader has arrived, you will get another message telling you that they are at the colony you selected. Click on the trade icon to view their wares. Click on whoever you want to trade with. The alien cultures and some traders trade between themselves in a legal grey area. Much of what they sell is stolen or banned or just extremely rare. But there are also the travelling traders who trade, for example, in highly illegal anti-personnel virus weapons. The Federation has forbidden the selling of ores to anyone but their own representatives, since ore is always needed for the industrial worlds. But travelling traders risk everything for the huge profits that can be made trading ores and missiles. This shows what items you possess and how much money you have to spend. It will also show you how much you have spent or made on any transaction. This shows you the trader's list of goods for sale. All traders display the price at which they buy and the price at which they sell. This tells you the average price you have paid for this item to date. This shows you what you're buying. If you click on this to highlight it and then click on the information icon, you can find out more about the item. This may not actually tell you that the item is stolen or otherwise illegal, but it should give you a fair idea. Clicking on this sells a single item to the trader. Clicking on this one buys a single item from that trader. Buying multiple items is more easily done with the slider bar. You can see that the numbers change immediately, showing you what you have bought or sold and how much you have made or spent. Unlike the Federation, trade with these people is instant. The money is credited to you immediately and once you have exited the menu, you cannot change your mind. Some of the alien cultures do not take kindly to being offered their own stolen artefacts on the open market and the Federation takes an extremely hard line with anyone caught using anti-personnel viruses. You have been warned. The communication system allows you to talk to the ambassadors representing other Federation members as well as to the ambassador representing Terran interests in the fragmented sectors. If you want to initiate any dialogue, start here. Replies and alien-initiated conversations will be signalled in the report summary. The ambassadors will not be available to speak to before you have discovered one of their colonies by sending out a scout ship. Once you have encountered them, their image will appear here and they will introduce themselves to you. Having encountered them, when you want to speak to someone, click on their image. You have a choice of topics shown here. Clicking on one of these will show you the opening line of that conversation and clicking on that sentence will initiate the dialogue. Ambassador Lars' reply is shown here. Where appropriate, your dialogue choices appear here. Click on what you want to say and the dialogue continues to appear here. It is worth remembering that since this conversation is happening in real time, you cannot retract anything you have said once you have clicked on that sentence. You can also set up pacts and treaties through the communications menus. Select Non-Aggression Pact or Joint Combat Treaty from your initial list of topics. Select which culture you wish to invite Valtimar to ally with you against, the duration of the treaty and other conditions of the treaty. When you are happy with the terms, Click on the tick to send your proposal to Valtimar. It will take a few moments for your would-be ally to consider the terms you have sent. When the Achaeans have given your proposal due thought, 
Their reply will be signaled here. You have a new message. The report summary will show the reply in full. In this case, Valtimar has agreed to your terms. However, depending on the terms you suggest and the state of play between your cultures, he might have sent you a counter-proposal. You both get two chances to change the terms of any pact or treaty before finalizing. Sometimes you will not be able to agree. One last thing. If you are fined because you have broken or failed to fulfill the terms of a treaty, the money will be deducted automatically from the money budget in finance. Should you have insufficient money to pay your fine, the Federation will deduct it from the money you earn from ore sales. The amount you owe them will be shown here. If you have paid your fines, no debt will be shown. Jane Fong is your representative. As the Terran ambassador, you can complain to her about the activities of your competitors and report them for illegal dealings. This may or may not have the results you desire. If you are playing a network game, you can send messages to the other players by clicking on their silhouette and typing a message into the panel that will appear. To send the message, click on the cyber button, press return on the keyboard or click on the return icon to clear the screen. Personnel management will only be necessary once you have attained a certain level of success in expanding your colonies. You will be informed when colony supervisors and agents are available for hire. Incoming coded message from Tetracorp. Hiring, firing and day-to-day -day management is handled by the personnel menus. Your employees' photographs will be displayed here once you have hired them. To hire an agent, click on the Agents icon. And to employ a colony supervisor, click on the Colony Supervisors icon. Click on the photograph of the person you're interested in and then on the information icon for their details. This will give you basic information about them. Clicking on the Colony Supervisors icon will ensure that they arrive by the next Federal Transporter. You can then set their tasks. You will be informed when your Colony Supervisor has arrived. You can now set the level of responsibility that you wish your supervisor to work to. This can be changed at any time. Clicking on any of the tasks selects or deselects them. Further explanation of the tasks can be found in the manual. If you are employing more than one supervisor, you can toggle through them using these icons. Using these, it is possible to fire your colony supervisor or to have them placed under escort until the next federal transporter arrives. Escorting them costs money, which, like their wages, is drawn from the personnel budget. The information icon will not only access the supervisor's official resume, but will also access any unauthorized information about them that you might have found on the black market. It is important to make sure that the personnel budget does not run out of funds, since some supervisors are less patient than others and may leave your employment with more than just bad feeling. Personnel management will only be necessary once you have attained a certain level of success in expanding your colonies. You will be informed when agents are in your area and available for work. Incoming coded message from agent. Hiring, firing and day-to-day -day management is handled by the personnel menus. 
Your employees' photographs will be displayed here once you have hired them. To employ a colony supervisor, click on the colony supervisor's icon. And to hire an agent, click on the agent's icon. Please note that agents will only appear here for the time they are in your sector and while you are employing them. To learn more about any agent, highlight them and then click on the information icon. To hire an agent, highlight and click on Hire icon. Agents are freelancers and available for missions rather than being permanently employed. Before selecting a mission, you must select a target. The missions vary from agent to agent. Some are prepared to go further than others and, of course, some are better at their job than others. Agents' fees come out of the personnel budget, which is shown here. If there are insufficient funds, it will show red. From the finance icon, however, you can switch funds to the required amount. In addition to specific missions, agents can also be sent to perform basic espionage for a number of days. The information icon will not only access the agent's official resume, but will also access any unauthorised information about them that you might have found on the black market. And finally, the cancel icon will clear all selected orders. Once the agent has carried out their missions, they will wait at the target colony for a short period of time for new orders. If none are forthcoming, they will leave, perhaps to be hired by one of your competitors. <laughs>